the baby. I'm the one carrying this baby day and night, 24-7. Don't you think I have a little bit of say in all of this? Mary, it wasn't me, it was the angel. An angel told me in a dream. <laughs> yeah, right, I can hear Mary say. If there's another reason that Joseph names Jesus, Joseph is actually the stepfather, not the biological father of Jesus. Matthew begins his book with a genealogy, the ancestral name, a tree of Jesus. Now, who in their right mind would begin a book with a genealogy filled with all those begats that put people to sleep? Not a, any good author, and yet Matthew does it to prove a point. Joseph is a descendant of the major royal line from Solomon, son of David, to whom God gave this promise. I will raise up your offspring after you, who come forth from your body, and I will establish his kingdom. He will build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. Since the time of David, the royal lineage birth of the Messiah was going to come through him. Matthew wants everyone in the world to know that Joseph is from the lineage of David and therefore an inheritor of this promise that from that line the Messiah would come. Well, a genealogical purist would point out that Joseph, of course, is not the biological father of Jesus, and so, you know, properly, Jesus shouldn't be in the family tree. Shame on those purists. They don't understand Jewish law. In that time, Jewish law was such that whoever na uh, uh, named the child formerly was adopting that child. And in accordance with the, with, with, uh, the naming of that child would inherit all the legal rights. There was no distinction between biological and adopted. So when Joseph names Jesus, Jesus becomes a full member and inheritor of the ancestral line is the promised one, the Messiah. There is yet another reason. Matthew writes, all this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God with us. That prophet is the beloved prophet Isaiah, who hundreds of years earlier had promised that God was going to send someone who would bring God's presence into the world and his name would be Emmanuel, God with us. For centuries, these had been words of assurance and promise and they are words of assurance and promise to us, words that build confidence and trust. I imagine there have been times in your life when, when you were afraid, when you weren't sure, when everything seemed to be dark. I remember those times, especially when I was a child. I think I was five years old when I had my tonsils out. I, I remember standing in front of those huge elevator doors waiting to go up and then wondering if I was ever going to be able to come out. I didn't let anyone know, because I was trying to be brave, but inside I was very afraid. When I was recovering, I was tossing and turning in my bed, feeling lost and alone and afraid and scared. And then I felt my mother's hand grab hold of mine and hurt her in the dark. Don't worry, I'm here. This is what God did for us in Jesus. Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us. Emmanuel is God grabbing each one of us by the hand and, 
and saying to us, don't worry, I'm here. On that first Christmas night when Joseph and Mary and the shepherds and the magi and the angels and all the animals looked down upon the baby Jesus, they knew he was Emmanuel, God with us. This is what God promises you and me when we come to the manger in faith and trust. This is what Jesus promises us we open our hearts to him. That he will be our Emmanuel, our promise, God with us. As the prophet Isaiah declares again, but now thus says the Lord, he who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you, I have called you by name, you are mine. Do not you are God's. You belong to God. God is not absent from your life, even though you may walk in darkness, even though you may be afraid, even though you may be wandering in life, even though you might feel lost. In Jesus, in the babe born in Bethlehem, God is taking you by the hand and saying, don't worry. Don't be afraid. His name is called Emmanuel. God is with us. Emmanuel. Peace of God which passes all understanding. We'll keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Let us stand and confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. With the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. in anticipation of God's presence. We pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. God of promise, you sent Jesus into the world to be the fulfillment of all the promises you made to humanity. Help us to appreciate all that you have given us. <coughs> Lord, in your mercy, remind us during this hectic season to turn our attention toward you. Help us to continue caring for this earth and all that live upon it. Lord, in your mercy. Fill our world's leaders with goodwill and with a desire to work toward justice and peace so that all your children may know you and sing your praise. Lord, in your mercy. Bring healing and hope to all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Let us not forget those in need during this time of love and abundance. Lord, in your mercy, shine your light into the nations of the world that are unaware or unwilling to follow you. Help us to make your name known to everyone who sleeps restlessly tonight. Lord, in your mercy, with gratitude to the saints for the blessed ways they have sought justice and peace, 
Lord, in your mercy. Knowing you are a gracious and merciful God, we pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let's share that peace with one another. seated and the ushers await upon us as we joyfully share our gifts with the Lord.
please stand. pray together our offering prayer. God of abundance, we bring before you the precious fruits of your creation and with them our very lives. Teach us patience and hope as we care for all those in need. Until the coming of your Son, our Savior and Lord. Amen. night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broken and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. You are welcome to come and receive the presence and the peace of the Christ child in the Holy Supper. Come before the manger.
just pray. Oh God, we give you thanks that you have set a, before us this feast, the body and blood of your Son. By your Spirit, strengthen us to serve all in need and to give ourselves away as bread for the hungry. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Receive the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
go in peace. Christ is your life.